<laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, while, while you were talking about this power vacuum, right? Um, and I was talking to one of my friends about this. Uh, I actually uh, also spoke about this on a different podcast. Um, but the idea of, um, you know, um, religion being a three part thing where you have the first part, which is the which is the philosophy. It's the the origin of ideas. And, um, you know, it goes through its own process of like um, peer review per se. Sure. Right. So it, do, it does have its peer review and then. Uh, like a group of people agree to a certain set of ideas making it like a group philosophy right and then they start living by this philosophy be it um be it like things that did not form a religion like stoicism right uh it did not form into religion but it was still a philosophy you you there's like documented people like aristotle or plato that you know um kind of live by it or lived by it right back in the day um so th those did not turn into religion but they were still philosophies right um so that would be like for me that would be where it all starts and then you have this other layer of um of conformance or guidelines or things that come on top of it uh to unite a bigger group of people into for lack of a better word cult Sure. Yeah. Right. Um, not not in a very not in any negative way, but you know, like a like a big yeah. organization I mean, of people. If, if you go by the, just the dictionary definition of cult, like any religion is going to be a cult. Right. And, and it doesn't have to be a negative connotation like what we use in the modern era, but it's a, yeah, I think it's an appropriate word. Yeah, and just like the word argument, right? Sure. It could be a point or a an discussion. Actual, a discussion. Right? Yeah. Um, anyway, so um, so that would be like the set of guidelines that go around it and, um, you know, uniting the masses based on similar um, ideas or, 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 you know, the need to change or the want to change certain aspects of society or how we live or how they feel that it will be a better society, right? Um, and then the third layer, which is, which is the which is not the fun layer, but that layer would be essentially people using religion for power. Right. Like, so that layer essentially is how you use religion to control the masses or like a lot of people call it oppression. A lot of people um, call it, um, you know, faith or people call it, they're 25,000 different They justify, games. you're saying that they, they use religion to justify a means to an end or justify wars or whatever their actions might be. Exactly. Uh, but but you would have extremists on one side sure. um, that that um, use religion in a certain way and or interpret the words in a, in a certain way uh, to justify their actions, like you said. Uh, and at the same time, you would have the other group of people um, that would instigate a certain group of people for their advantage. And, you know, it's like, there's like politics involved. There's like so many different things involved. Um, and all of that has to do with people in power wanting to be in power or people that are not in power trying to achieve power. Right. Like even if we consider India um, in uh, like during the East India Company era, mm -hmm. like before they were colonized, the, the British used uh, the conflict between the Hindus and the Muslims to create a divide between them so that so that 150 British soldiers essentially took over a country, right? right? Um, and like, it's just like a handful of people and they took over the country for 150 years mm -hmm. by creating this religious divide, right. right? And that happens all the time. I mean, we've seen it in the modern era. We've seen it in Iraq, for example, between the Sunnis and the Shia prior to 2003, there was very, very few conflicts because you know, like Saddam or not, Saddam had an iron fist and, and his people knew that they could only do certain things. But now there's divides between every neighborhood and you have to go Sunni neighborhood, Shia neighborhood, and there's there's you know people who are stopping people in Baghdad from going into certain neighborhoods or there's hatred amongst people who were childhood friends and now they, they're like, oh, I can't go to his house because he's Shia or I can't go to his house because he's Sunni. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's in tales all the time, honestly. But such an interesting thing that, you know, it all starts with a good idea, good philosophy, like, hey, do no harm to people, don't lie, don't kill people. Um, you know, like, you know, the Ten Commandments is something that um, is pretty common, like, or something 
very similar, is very common across um, all um, all philosophies that go around. Like I'm I'm not talking about just religion, sure. but all philosophies around um, the betterment of lives, right? Uh, and it all ends up with you know like these layers that come on top of it, right. and then people make their own translations um, right, to justify their means. And right. Now I will say that. It's almost like a chicken and egg situation, I think. So, like, you laid it out in the three prongs, right? Philosophy first, and then, like, kind of rules and regulations, and then power dynamic. I would I would not call them rules. I would call them <laughs> guidelines. <laughs> okay, so there is a subtle difference between rules and, and, and guidelines. Um, for me, personally, I think of them more as rules, because they do tend to be very rigid, right? And especially if we're talking about, um, you know, first century Christianity or or the Code of Hammurabi, Um those were like an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, do unto others as you have done unto you. Um, things like that. Now, those don't really have any nuance, right? Like, you steal, the Code of Hammurabi says, like, you steal something, your left hand gets chopped off. Like, there's, there's, there's no in-between. But to me, like, religion, I don't know if it necessarily came first or philo- the philosophy came first. Because if you look at Moses, um, he led his people out of Egypt after being enslaved for many, many years. And he went up onto Mount Sinai and he got the, the tablets, he got the Ten Commandments. And then he told his people, like, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, thou shalt not steal, etc. And um, he and his people believed in God long before those commandments came to be. So he had this religion and this connection to God prior to getting his rules and regulations or his guidelines, if you will. And yet these guidelines are really what ended up shaping most of the Abrahamic religions and they've survived to this day and are still so incredibly important. But it's it's really all just to control the people. So if you're guiding, say, 40,000 Jews out of the desert after being enslaved for 100 years, there's still going to be infighting, right? There's going to be people who say, oh, well, Moses, who, like, you were raised by the Pharaoh. Like, why should you be the one to lead us out? Why should you be the one? Like, you don't actually have a better connection to God than I do. So you're going to have a lot of fighting. So perhaps there were murders. I mean, this is, you know, extrapolating a little or a lot. But, like, you just don't, you don't know what was going on. Like, why did Moses decide that that was the time that he needed to present these rules of God? Or why did God decide that that particular moment fleeing the Egyptians, going back to the promised land was the time to present these rules to live by. And for me personally, I think it's I think it's a very convenient thing to just say, oh, well, God gave me these tablets. They were destroyed because I did something wrong, so you can't see them. But suddenly, you aren't allowed to have an affair with your neighbor's wife. You aren't allowed to murder people. You aren't allowed to steal. So I, I do think that a lot of religion is just to control and to make sure. I mean, some people, you know, some people can't control themselves without these guidelines or these rules, and that's okay. You see this all the time with addicts. Like you see this like in the twelve step program, like with AA, right? AA is a Christian organization. They have all these twelve steps and. You have to atone for your sins, like you have to apologize to people that you've hurt and go through that program.